Ideally, we do want to go to places that aren't finished. Porto. Haven't been in Portugal for a while. So that seems like fun. And we'll figure out the best way to get there. So we'll accept the delivery, but we will just drive around with the truck first. It's not going to expire or anything. So, which way we want? How do we want to do this, basically? <laughs> Bearing in mind that we'll probably come back to the town square some other time. No, not necessarily, because we don't have to. Actually, we'll, we'll probably finish by taking a delivery from the town square. Turn left. But we'll get that to discover. So we're just going to enjoy the Christmas lights, the city streets, there's the market in here, Get walking around, admiring the market. It's going to head off this way, go Turn left. east to start with, but I'm not going to go all the way up to the viewpoint yet, we're going to do the little bit because it's a lot easier to do without a trailer. I have done it with a trailer because I took a wrong turn uh, in ATS but I would rather not. <laughs> Even though it would be easier in a flat nose truck anyway. Past the mansion. Okay, let's find a new route. It's got nice decorations on the door. A lot of little details have gone into the Winterland area. It's really nice. Please make a U-turn when possible. No. Over the river. Which is, as you'd expect, rather frozen. Make a U-turn. Still wants me to make a U-turn. I don't know, maybe this was meant to be a one-way street? I'm not sure. But <laughs> Too bad. Which quadrant do we do next? I think we go to the southern area now. Get ready to turn right. Turn right. Never mind. I'll find a new route. Okay, let's find a new route. Yeah, this will be kind of awkward to do this bit, I think. Probably should have come a different way. Go down here. There's another big Christmas tree in a smaller market area, almost. Just some little huts by it, anyway. Not quite sure what's going on there, but it's nice enough. I guess we want to go this way and kind of start our loop. It's just the bit in between that's going to be a bit annoying. I guess we're going to have to go through it twice one way or another. But we can also just start driving down it and see if it okay. does it discover entirely? No. We can just to turn drive right. to the end and do a UE and come back again. We don't have to keep going turn forwards. Right. Just do a sick donut in the snow. Can't quite skip the back of the truck around, but never mind. <laughs> Maybe if we had the shorter chassis on, <laughs> we could just get it around. For once we're actually doing what we're told. Turn right. 
here we go left and then right we will actually go down to the left there anyway at the end now the best way generally to do these sorts of exploration things is kind of do the largest outer loop first so we kind of go all the way to the end and then work backwards kind of in smaller elements which is kind of zigzag your way through at that point but at least you've covered off the the outside and then you work your way in otherwise you find yourself just having to redo a lot more Winding through the streets, here's the skating rink. I had a feeling that one of these, like, discovered a lot all at once. Ah, uh, but there's just the little bits at the end. But the road down the tween did clear off, so that's nice. So we don't have to drive down there. We don't actually have like a Winterland scent on our map, funnily enough, given that it doesn't feature in the main game, but it's still nice to take a look. You know, they've gone to the effort of putting all of these side streets in, so it's only fair that we take the effort to drive down each and every single one of them and appreciate what there is to see. Toy store there. Toys and jingles. There's a lot of repeating motifs and stuff, of course. It's hard to be completely unique with every single toy fr uh, storefront. There's another Toys and Jingles back there, for example. Oh, this entirely discovered. That's good. This must have been the one that I was thinking of. There's like a gated park in there. Snowman. We're going the wrong way down here, looks like, judging by the cars that are parked. Oh well. Okay. Never mind. I'll find a new Alright, now we head out into the Winterland countryside again. Turn right. And head north to the post office. Turn right. Via uh, the ring road. I don't know why there's the sort of ring road connections. I would have thought they'd just have you drive through the town if you're going like from north to south and stuff but whatever and now I bet I'll get a delivery like I'll be wanting to go to the mountain resort but I'll come in at the top left portal again or something like that <laughs> get ready to that's fine right. through the corners. Now we go through the tunnel. There's a nice Christmas tree off to the side, I seem to remember, through a little kind of window in the tunnel. Uh, blink and you miss it, because we'll be going fast. <laughs> yeah, there's like a bleh, purple grotto in there. That's where the abominable snowman lives. It's a fun little feature, but I don't know, maybe I'm missing something about it, but I didn't consider it worth taking a screenshot of or anything. It's nice though. I just need to have like the Don Murrow music from Warcraft playing for this whole area. I'm struggling up the hill there a little bit, even without pulling a trailer. Interesting. I didn't think it was that steep. We still need to do the top Turn bit, left. which is going to be tricky. It's a case of whether or not we want to go to the same portal time and time again, which I mean we may as well, to be honest. It 
Because otherwise we can go to the one that's towards the mountain resort, but I don't know. It's hard to figure out how we then discover the other bit of road. I guess we can just drive across the lake, can't we? And then go up to the overlook and then down to the station and the post office. I guess that works. Then we can head to the next portal across where it's telling me to turn around basically. It's interesting that it doesn't recognize this road to the left as being a route even though you can clearly drive through it. Engine turned off again. Make a U-turn now. Make a U-turn now? No, I'm going to drive across a frozen lake instead. Because I can. Okay, let's find a new route. We'll just drive across to where we were the other time. Make a U-turn when possible. Recomputing. And go via the viewpoint. Make a U-turn now. Peter, we can swim. Kind of hydroplane. <laughs> let's go over to the Christmas tree that's over, off by itself, actually. Because I haven't been over here yet. Mind the rocks. And spinning around, should have gone around the other way so I could see it better out of the nearer window, never mind. Very nice. I mean, there's a ton of Christmas trees around, but that one's off by itself. Deserves a little bit of love. Just gotta remember, even if people like to be by themselves on Christmas, it pays to check up on them every now and then. Make sure they're doing alright. A little bit goes a long way sometimes. Head over to the fishing village. Look, the new art section of Twitch. Yeah, not as much non child safe stuff as we were talking about. That's because they rolled back on a bunch of their stuff. Like, they, they basically reversed what they said a day after they said it. <laughs> okay. That was my understanding. It's like, hey, you can do this now and then people abused it immediately and they went ah you can no longer do this anymore <laughs> we realize that we're actually dealing with infants and not in that way but dealing with people of a mental age of an infant as well give people an inch and they will show you exactly what they want to do with it. <laughs> Last time we came down this hill and that was a much better idea than trying to drive up it. Getting there now. I guess the other side wasn't as steep. And now it is actually a good time to be taking this viewpoint because it's night. Yep, and we overshot. <laughs> Easy to do when you're trying to snuff on snow. There we go. Actually, can we leave it in reverse and will that stop us sliding? No, no it will not. Let's put the parking brake on, shall we? <laughs> and watch the viewpoint. There we go. Interesting, they, they have you turn the engine off in order to activate the viewpoint, but my lights are still on. That's not healthy for my battery. That's not good. You need to be 13 to have a Twitch account. Correct. To imagine people at 13 have probably seen not safe for work, not safe for work by the new way. Not always. No, not necessarily at all. I think it's a, a very poor assumption. Well, they may have, but there's... A, there's no reason to assume that they will have, nor should they have, and nor should they have to be exposed to it on a platform like this. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> Check out, I think my, my stream might still be flagged as mature from ages ago. Screenshot time. 
And it shouldn't be by now, really. I haven't played any violent games in a while. <laughs> It was more when I was doing Witcher 3 and called zombies and stuff. Doggy. Yeah, there's always the thing of like, yeah, you need to be 13 to have a Twitch account. No, you need to say that you're 13 to have a Twitch account. That's why there's the whole thing of like no ages in chat and stuff like that previously, right? That's a case of if someone says that they're under 13 you basically have to ban them because they're not meant to be there so it's the whole no ages in chat thing don't talk about how old you are or anything like that because if you say that you are too young then you should not be on the platform but we all know that it happens like there are lots of people who are not actually 13 it's the old thing of I mean, I think before we were 18, we were all clicking, yes, I'm definitely over 18 when viewing certain websites on the internet. You know, browsing liquor prices and stuff, for example. You know, and just want to check what beer prices are like. Perfectly innocent stuff. Finally, we are here. Finally, we're here. It does need to be like that. And here's the post office. And we just got to drive out onto, out onto the lake over here as well. So we discover that. We'll pick up the trailer. We'll go around the, the loop road. Probably should come in that way instead. But never mind. Down the boat ramp, basically. <laughs> it's now a truck ramp. Oh. Whee! Be like a frozen Loch Ness monster here just sticking out of the lake. That would be fun. Skid, 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 skid. Internet back for those regulation all. Yeah, same. <laughs> it's, it's not to say that that is good. <laughs> Kids should not be learning about lemon parties or blue waffles. It's as simple as that. So it's one of those growing things. It's basically our generation's version of all sorts of bad things that our parents and stuff might have had to put up with. Like corporal punishment and things like that. <laughs> you know, it's just because we had to put up with it doesn't make it right. It doesn't mean to say that we should expect the new generation to have to put up with it as well. The idea is to learn from the mistakes of the past, not to perpetuate them. Now, how do I get over to there? I think I need to go this way, because I want to go out the other exit of the lake, ideally. Rather than retracing my steps entirely. I mean, it's showing that we've discovered this, but we haven't actually been this way yet, so... Go past the boat up on the stand with the Christmas lights and we go off this way there's like a channel that's marked out off to the left and we go skid 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 I'm hoping that it won't be night time when we get through to the other side of the portal uh, is there aurora around? No, no aurora at the moment. That's alright. I've seen plenty of it yesterday. I'm sure we'll see more of it again. Generally, while we're in Winterland, I've just been driving in the cab because it's, it's easier to get a feel for the controls and driving on the snow when I'm in the cab, <laughs> rather than doing it third person. We'll see, save scenic modes uh, for when we're outside, 
of Winterland. Speaking of alcohol provinces decide recently any store should be able to sell alcohol. That is interesting. <laughs> There's only certain stores that could... Yeah, we have licensing over here as well. Still need a license, now it's easy to get. Ah, okay. Can't say if it's a bad or a good idea. People are up in arms over it. People will be up in arms either way. Like, if you didn't have licensing and you were introducing it, then people would be up in arms over that. If you do have it, and then it becomes either easier or they get rid of it, then people will be up in arms over that. And sometimes it'll be the same people, and they won't actually be affected by the decision one way or the other, but they just like to be upset about things. That's generally what I've observed <laughs> from things in the media. Is, uh, people like to have something to be upset about sometimes. Certain people just really love to have an axe to grind. Or something to grind it on. Like, I think licensing is a good thing and there should be penalties for people who are um, irresponsible like if you're selling alcohol to minors then you have your license revoked things like that or suspended for a period of time all of that sort of thing that's that's why you have licensing you don't have licensing specifically to control the outlets and how many there are to me because that's generally the idea of making it harder to get is because you're trying to control how many there are but it's a case of well if you think that it is of sound business for you to be able to sell here or there or whatever then go for it but if you get to a certain saturation point like if there's five shops on the same bit of street all selling alcohol then it's like well you're just eating each other's scraps and that's not smart but that's on you guys just make it expensive to get a license there you go that's the, that's the main thing <laughs> cool stop engine go through the portal but over here it's fairly hard to get a license because it goes up for like community okay. approval essentially okay. and everyone will just hate you if you try and apply for a liquor license these days it seems and the police get involved even though they're really not meant to. So it becomes a whole thing. And yeah, there's aspects of that that don't make sense to me. It, it could be easier. But at the same time, there's plenty of liquor stores around. And I much prefer it when it's big chain stores that have all of the requisite controls and stuff in place already, rather than small local outfits that then have to fit themselves out for the relevant controls because the other one's more likely to then sell to miners and stuff accidentally you know not not maliciously or anything but they'll be laxer on id checks and stuff generally so sometimes having the weight of the brand behind it just kind of helps it's a weird thing licensing and regulation and stuff is always and kind of wasp hive of issues. <laughs> you certainly don't solve every problem, but the main point is that you've got controls in place, so if, if people abuse it, then you can like revoke their license and stuff. Uh, so which way am I supposed to go through here? I feel that some of these don't normally have barriers. And of course I've chosen it. It's directed me specifically to the one where I have to stop. That's annoying. <laughs> Come on, guys. What are they all have barriers? Ah, oh, the one that the car was going through didn't have a barrier, looks like. So that would have been the one to take. Never mind. It'd be nice if the GPS was a little bit more helpful there. So we have actually been to this part of town before, which is kind of annoying. I was kind of hoping that this would be a part of the city that I had not been to before. That's kind of where this sort of one-way portal trip is quite useful. But that's alright. It's also nighttime again, which is kind of annoying. I was hoping it would be daytime. But we can still appreciate the trailer a bit. So this is from the post office, so we've got letters, as you'd expect. <laughs> Santa's mail. Very nice. Letters and presents. Q. 
Keep right, then exit right. Interesting that it basically just popped us up right in the city exit already. Right. I mean, it was a rest stop of sorts, but it was right in the city area. The Porto is quite spread out, I seem to remember. It's, it's kind of interesting that this is the place that we have actually been to before. <laughs> but not entirely. Get ready to turn left. It would kind of be better if we'd been coming at this from the south, to be honest. Never mind. Like most places, Canada's a three-layer government. That's not actually like most places, I think you'll find. Uh, a lot of places only have two layers. By most places, you mean like America. <laughs> That's basically it. America and Australia are two that I know of. But, I don't know, here we don't have a provincial government. We have different, like, provinces of sorts, but they don't have jurisdiction. We have regional councils, but they have different responsibilities. They are not the same. We have city councils, which administer rates and stuff, and then we have the federal Keep level, basically. Right. Then exit but, right. yeah. We don't have a provincial or state exit level right. of governance. And I feel that's true of a lot of places. Otherwise you just kind of end up with lots of mini countries within the country and that's not great. I mean you just look at the United States as to how that's a terrible way of functioning. <laughs> it makes sense to an extent but the, the level of responsibilities has to be more refined. They have far too much individual autonomy. And it's similar in, the, in Australia. It's not quite as bad, I think. I feel the the federal layer in Australia is a bit better. A bit more like... Maybe they're just better at it. It's setting the regulation that the states have to follow. Whereas over in the United States, to get something through, like the states have to ratify it or something. So basically they can just turn around and go, no. <laughs> and it's just... A bizarre way of operating that they could just go no we don't want to <laughs> so no but you have to so no we don't <laughs> hey yeah that's a stupid way of doing things <laughs> yeah of course now a car comes around the corner it's decided i wanted to discover that little extra corner but so i don't know if i'll be back this way municipality is hard left really that's interesting and yet they still did that whole alcohol thing that's odd turn left what's in bicker when they're supposed to get along they don't it's funny yeah that's just the tiresome bit about politics in general is how much of it just comes down to bickering and how much of it just becomes about like personal attacks instead of We're here. ideological right like they don't debate anymore they argue they don't debate pros and cons and points and stuff it's just arguments between people who never want to compromise and it annoys me how much that then gets encouraged by voters it's like because they don't want to compromise it's like no i want you to do what i want it's like ah but the whole point is that you have to compromise for the sake of the whole but that just goes out the window <laughs> these days no one wants to actually come to a table and discuss things really it's all my way or the highway 12 out of 15. How are we looking? It keeps going to viewpoints when I just want to look at the pictures I've taken. There you go. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, job market. So, we've been to the Arts Workshop, Town Square, and Post Office. So, Chocolate Factory, I guess. There you go. <laughs> it is a different one. Let's take it before it disappears, to be honest, because I want to do that, and I want to do the mountain resort. So, alcohol isn't controlled by the municipality, it's controlled by the province. So that's the problem, is that's, that's wrong to me. I feel that that should be the municipality level, because they're the ones who are most affected by it. You know, if stuff is being sold within a city, well, it's up to the city to police that. It doesn't make sense that that would be a provincial level thing. But, in terms of what regulations and stuff are required, that should be a federal thing, not even a provincial thing. 
Like, it should be a case of, yeah, this is how we do alcohol licensing in this country. <laughs> and then it's up to the municipality to administer that and make sure that people abide by those rules. So it should be just regulation that filters down are. from kind of generally the very top. Because that's like a overall public health issue. It isn't a provincial thing. Municipalities deal with basic services on water, electricity, and roads. I mean, that is nice. <laughs> I just feel that things like trading, like stores trading, is also kind of that. I'd love it if our city councils dealt primarily in the utilities instead of getting involved in things that they shouldn't. Our city council primarily wants to build bloody stadiums and cycleways. I guess cycleways comes under roads, but no one bloody uses them, so they're kind of pointless. <laughs> they, they certainly don't administer the roads. <laughs> Got potholes big enough to sit in. <laughs> A lot of places. So I'm not sure what the closest portal is going to be, but we're heading this way for now. I would guess we just go back the way we came, kind of? I don't know. I just want to discover this bit of road around here, because this seems really confusing. Oh, this is a one-way system. Ah, uh, okay, that's kind of annoying. Well, we're going to pull out into traffic. Okay, well, we can go the wrong way down there if we want to, but we probably shouldn't. Yeah, I've never really understood what a provincial or state level sort of governance should really do that shouldn't just come from the federal level. That's why we don't really have that here. <laughs> Over in New Zealand, we don't really have that because it doesn't really make sense to us. <laughs> like, what would it do differently? It helps, though, that our population is much smaller, so the idea of our, like, federal government doing, like, setting regulations is maybe fine compared to the size of other places, but, I don't know, generally one rule for all kind of works better. Get on with it. I don't know. In broad strokes, at least. Uh, so now, the problem with doing this little corner here is I didn't realise that I hadn't actually been down this other bit before at all. So now we actually have to do this bit. And get our trailer stuck. Of course. Government of Canada do have hard rules, but they don't like hard rules, so they do mostly guidelines, right? So it's their own fault being too soft. There we go. Got around this time. I'll find a new route. But you have more sheep than people? Yeah, you probably do as well. <laughs> Most herd animals tend to outnumber people in countries where they do agriculture. That's uh it's kind of an irrelevant stat. Never really understood why people make issue of that. Finding new route. So I'm fairly sure that's true in Australia too, wouldn't surprise me, because the the larger an area and therefore population I guess it's different in the likes of Europe where you have really high population density of people. I should have just driven up to the route. Why didn't I just drive up to the route? Why am I doing this? Why why you do this? I should have just driven up to the roundabout and gone back around rather than trying to cut across. <laughs> I just wanted to discover a little bit of road, that's all. Classic me. <laughs> I mean, we probably have more cows than people as well. We definitely have more potatoes and onions than people. Uh, you know, that, that sort of thing shows how stupid a point that is to generally make. Is that, yeah, do you have more cobs of corn than people? Yes, of course you do. <laughs> you do agriculture. Of course you do. At the roundabout, take the third exit. 
It's just a density of small thing greater than density of big thing with more needs. <laughs> it's gonna go round the roundabout fully because there's this little bit here that needed to be discovered. And that's always annoying to come back and do. Just gonna do some, some big donuts. Doing like a gravity sling. There you go. Zoom. Instead of having a person as Prime Minister, you have your most known animal as Prime Minister. I mean, there's a place in New Zealand called Fonga Momona, and a while ago they, somewhat facetiously, declared themselves a republic. Now, it functionally means nothing. They are He's still left. part of New left. Zealand and must abide by all the laws, but they have their own novelty passport. Turn left. And they had presidential elections, and at one point their president was a goat. <laughs> ultimately it shouldn't matter right like to me the job of a prime minister is to represent the country in like meetings and stuff they are a face nothing more they can kind of maybe set direction or be like the casting vote for things but they should not matter who it is should not matter that's the annoying thing when it comes to elections these days. They make such a big fuss. Right. They basically turned it into presidential style things where you're voting for the Prime Minister. No, you're not. You're voting for a series of policies and hopefully people who know what they're doing in order to get things done. That's what matters. Take the personality out of it. It's just abstract things because these are meant to be professionals. They shouldn't be letting their personal feelings get in the way in the f at all. It's never the case, of course, but that's the idea. Now, I don't do my job dictated on how I feel about something. Let's go f ah, once again, place we had to actually have stop. Should have gone one to the left. Oh, we know we can't trust the GPS to tell us where to go either, so... <laughs> Yeah, I know the current Canadian Prime Minister's had quite a few faux pas, right. <laughs> to say the least. Right. And it's a case of now, if that's representative of the right. party or whatever, it's like, why do you keep voting for this guy? But, I don't know. It's also just a reflection of, well, maybe you don't see those things as being that bad. I don't know. It's kind of weird. People are weird. There's also the aspect of, well, sometimes you've got to take the bad with the good. I don't know much about them. Whether or not maybe the party overall and the things that they want to do for the country is worth someone being a bit of an idiot sometimes. You know. <laughs> I don't know if that is the case. I don't know that much about them, but... Funnily enough, news of Canada tends to get overshadowed by news of America when it comes to what makes it over here. <laughs> it doesn't really affect us that much. Like, uh, I, I know that sometimes Canada features in news about trade deals and stuff with New Zealand because we're often a competition for agricultural things, like meat markets and stuff overseas. So I know it comes up then, but otherwise, not so sure certainly doesn't make much difference in terms of social policy things. It's not like there's much to compare between. I, I think that people have occasionally tried to make comparisons between like Vancouver and Auckland, but it doesn't really hold up. <laughs> He was just the PR leader of the party. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Oh, basically the marketing manager. <laughs> and that arguably that's the CEO, essentially. But unfortunately, we are meant to be the board, but we don't really have the ability to eject them. Well, we're the shareholders. The party is the board. 
the Prime Minister is the CEO. That's basically how it goes. I don't I know people don't like the idea of comparing a country with a company, but ultimately it comes down to very similar things. And given the size of a budget of a country, you kind of want people to know what they're doing when it comes to spending and how to invest and, and things like that. Return on benefit as well is another big big thing. It's one of the problems that our government for the last six or so years had big problems with is, okay, how are you going to measure your return? Is, is what you want to do actually worth it? <laughs> they weren't very good at that. So heading down to the chocolate factory. Now the interesting thing here is I'm not sure where to go after that. It's going to be an annoying thing. We're probably going to have to drive into and out of a portal. I mean, I'm fine with taking a delivery from the chocolate factory again, but we do want to go to a different portal than this one that I came in on. Kind of awkward. I kind of would have wanted to go to the mountain resort from here instead. It's tricky. I don't know. Again, we're, we're probably going to have to victory lap something. I mean, if there's a portal that I've not been to, but this is the third one. I've been to three out of four. So that means the fourth one is just where I can go from the town square if I want to for my last delivery. Not sure. It's now pitch black, as you can tell, so there's not much to see along the way. Uh, this is probably the most boring of the roads in Winterland to drive on. There's uh, a nice river there, which is all right to see in the small amount of daylight that occurs. But otherwise, there's not too much to see along here. The chocolate factory itself, though, is a very cool destination. How many deliveries do we even have to do after this? It's two, I think, isn't it? Basically, no, it's only two deliveries. I haven't kept track, really. Well, I have, but I haven't paid attention. <laughs> it keeps track for me, but I haven't paid attention. We need to go to the mountain resort. That's about it. We could also choose to take a delivery from the mountain resort next. Oh, and we come. And there's a big train station here, you'll notice. Even though we're delivering to the chocolate factory, they make the viewpoint about the train station here. So let's park up, turn off the engine, put on the parking brake, and enjoy the station. Great Southern Station. Yee. <laughs> funny that the ruling party seems to choose the guy that's good at looking bad yeah but maybe the rest of them are even worse <laughs> you know if you thought of that doesn't matter what your political is I tend to mock the PM that's kind of what they're there for as well really is that's who you just throw stones at no matter what they're doing whether you kind of go with them ideologically or not I don't know, that's my thought of it anyway tend to mock the PM even if he's a good person, that's how we are. Yeah, exactly, that's that's kind of what we do as well. That's important, I think. That's a, that's a very British trait, I feel. It's very similar to what it's like in the UK. No matter who the government is, you're always going to take the mickey out of them. So you get political satire programs like um, uh, so News of the World and uh, Mock the Week and um, Have I Got News for You and Things like that. That's that's where those sorts of shows are very important to be satirical about whoever's in power, just to kind of hold them to account. And no matter who it is, what they are go what they do is going to be scrutinised. And I think that's very important. Whereas over in the states, it tends to be very different. Like you do get the hard lines, but they'll their media is much more split, like left and right as well, right? So it's a bit of a mess. But I think they do have a bit of that aspect as well. Like Saturday Night Live tends to go either way. Alright, where do you want it? 
Will you need it? Too bad. <laughs> I guess we could, we, we want to go up to that corner anyway, so you know what? We will actually do a proper parking job this time, because we want to go up to that little corner, because we know from experience yesterday that it doesn't get discovered just by being here. So which one is it? That one. Okay. We still didn't actually discover that bit. We didn't, didn't drive far enough towards it, but that's alright. We will soon. That's our, that's our job when we leave here. Go. Lovely. Job done. Special salt delivered to a chocolate factory. Why are you putting salt to a chocolate factory? Is your special salt sugar? <laughs> Please? Because that would make me. I don't like salted caramel before you start on that. No, that's not good. Anyway, we are 5 out of 5 on the depots. We took that off yesterday. We're 13 out of 15 on the deliveries. Now, because it's an odd number, that would logically mean that you end up stuck in winterland um they should have just made it 20 even number anyway because you're going to from to from that's an even number um i i feel they should have made it 20 so then you can do 10 each game whatever anyway we'll come back to that shortly